today I'll be taking a look at my Pentacon f1.8 50mm lens. I got this lens when I bought a Practica TL1000 camera and this was the kit lens it was issued with way back. Initially I didn't pay much attention to the lens on this camera until I just happened to put it on my camera during a music video shoot uh, because I was looking for something a bit more gritty than my L series lenses and uh, oh boy what a good decision that was. Again as always I'll preempt my video and findings on this lens by saying that old lenses like this differ from specimen to specimen uh, unless it is um, absolutely factory mint condition uh, which mine is simply not. The Pentacon was produced in Dresden uh, if sources are correct, in East Germany, the Democratic Irony Republic of Germany. And as far as I can tell, this model that has the auto and the multi-coating on the front of the lens is of the later models of the M42 mount variant. Uh, the lenses were produced from 1971 to the 1990s, but from 1978 onwards, when I was born, the mount was changed to the Practica B mount for the Pr Practica SLR bayonet mount instead of the M42 mount, as mine is. The lens is technically a rebranded version, uh, that might not be the right word, or a descendant of the, or a copy of the Mayer Gorlitz Oriston 50mm f1.8, quite a well known lens, as the Mayer Gorlitz company was incorporated or taken over by the Pentacon Combinate Group in 1968. Now let's go through the technical specs and these shouldn't change with AIDS and this is the specs that it was issued with. Focal length 50mm, speaks for itself. Uh, the lens consists of six glass elements in four groups if that's of interest to you and it is multi-coated and that is of some interest to me. The aperture range is uh, f1 to f16 in half stop increments and uh, the aperture diaphragm sports a six blades which uh, should give you hexagonal bokeh, 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 bokeh shapes in some instances. Um, these metal blades are a bit reflective, they're not matte black, which can cause flare in the barrel. I can't say that I found it, but it can, and is given to a bit of grease in some instances. Not my copy so much, but I've heard other people say that these does have grease on the blades. The aperture has the option of a manual or an automatic stop down setting. The closest focusing distance is uh, really a pretty usable 33 centimeters compared to some of the other vintage 50s uh, that has focusing distances of 45 centimeters or even further. The focus throw of the lens is a long 320 degrees which makes for fine focusing but makes it virtually impossible to shift focus from 33 centimeters to infinity in one movement of the hand if you are in fact not double jointed. The lens is made of metal with a rubberized focusing ring. The lens I have weighs 194 grams. The length is 38 millimeters and it has a diameter of 60 millimeters and the filter thread size is a fairly common 49 millimeters. I expect to pay around 30 to 50 dollars uh, online as far as I can see currently. Now getting to my experience with the lens. Well, like I said, I was doing a music video and I felt I wanted a lens that has a bit more grit, vibe. Uh, the idea was to shoot B-roll only with this lens and then have the performances um, shot with my Canon L series lenses. I use the Canon F Concepts M42 EOS R adapted to fit it to my Canon R6. Now uh, the 50mm focal length on a full frame body allowed enough depth in the shots um, as not to feel too crowded as the set, my small studio and what would be in frame was already very tight um, and using a long focal length would compress the subject and background and create a very crowded feel in the frame. The close focusing distance made it possible to get quite close to the performer and focus on the eye and the f1.8 uh, aperture allowed for shallow depth of field. The focus throw is, a, is firm with just enough resistance to make it for smooth focusing. It's not loose but if I must be honest I couldn't accommodate focus as quickly as normally uh, because of this long throw. It did make for really pleasing slow focus transitions uh, which in the end worked out uh, well for this video. You can check out this uh, final music video at the link in the description and there you can see the full color grade and effects applied. 
I also took the lens to my garden, as all vintage lens enthusiasts and photography enthusiasts seem to do. The lens has swirly bokeh. Yes, you can get away with this cheap little lens for swirly bokeh if you don't have the extra literally couple of bucks for the slightly less cheap Helios or, or Jupiter, get a Pentagon. At f1.8, at the closest focusing distance of 33 centimeters, I found the bokeh to start swirling when the background is around 1.2 meters from the subject. Now, depending on what is in the background and how it is lit, the bokeh can be flowy and soft to such a point that it reminds me of an oil painting to bokeh that is bright with sharp outlines when you have lots of specular um, highlights and mottled highlights in the background. For the most part, I like it for the situations I tested it in. I didn't encounter clear hexagonal bokeh shapes, uh, but the bokeh balls are not round either. They're rather more spherical. The lens suffers quite badly from spherical aberrations as center sharpness gives way to pretty wild aberrations towards the edges uh, of the frame, especially at f1.8. But it cleans up to good sharpness at f16. The lens is overall not very sharp, uh, with f1.8 seldom hitting critical sharpness, uh, but from 2.8 it is considerably better. At f1.8 there's some ghosting, and especially as always at around bright edges. There isn't an obvious problem with chromatic aberrations, which I found interesting. And that I would imagine is the effect of the multi-coating on the lens that mitigates uh, chromatic aberrations. I'm actually quite surprised at how good it manages it uh, on a cheap lens like this. The lens vignettes at f1.8. Uh, at f16 this one clears out completely. Finally, to the most subjective and inaccurate of all observations made by most reviewers, and that is the topic of color and contrast. The lens, in my opinion, and the situations I used it in, seems like it's fairly vibrant. Uh, it has a neutral to cool color cast with decent contrast in well-lit situations. Now, my conclusion is that this lens is a must-have at the price. If you have any more info or detailed information rather on these lenses please feel free to flex down in the comment section i'm happy to be corrected if i got anything wrong as well i will leave some affiliate links to some of the pentacons i found for sale online maybe some other things as well that i use and things that i've like the adapters etc and so please have a look if you're on the market for some new gear and uh, yeah really just thank you for checking out my video all the way to the end I noticed from my analytics that 0.6% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So I reckon, why don't you just risk it all, go all in and subscribe, you know? And while you're at it, maybe throw in a like too. Anyways, see you in the next one.